Hi, this is Harrison, and welcome to another snowboard build. Um, in order to start designing this snowboard, I took some measurements off of the Battle on Surfer. So, the waist widths, the side cut, radius, and the stance setbacks are all the same, but the shape of the tips and tails are uh, my own original design. Um, I just sat around an inventor and just kind of played with things until they looked right. So after designing what I wanted the board to look like, I 3D printed this template that I was going to use in order to guide a router around the MDF and cut it out. But my 3D printer wasn't working too well and none of the prints lined up like I wanted them to so I ended up just scratching this idea and doing it by hand so in order to do it by hand I got a one-to-one -one scale printed onto a piece of paper I spray glued it to the MDF and went ahead and cut it out I cut it out with a bandsaw, just roughly, not very close to the line, and then I sanded it down to the line. So now that I have some uh, downtime, uh, for those of you who don't know how a snowboard is really made, the basic concept is you have five layers that you glue together with epoxy in a shape that you want. So <clears throat> these five layers are um, starting from the bottom to the top it goes uh, plastic, fiberglass, a wooden core, fiberglass, and then another layer of plastic. Um, the base plastic is different than the top sheet plastic the base plastic is what you write on. It holds wax um, and it's thicker. Whereas the top sheet plastic is just for a nice finished look and it keeps moisture away. <clears throat> so, as you saw earlier, I used the drill press with a little sanding bit in order to get into the nooks and crannies of the swallowtail. And I used this hillbilly setup with the belt sander to sand the side cuts in the nose. After it was sanded, I drilled these little guide hole things into the template, and this I'll explain why I don't go the full size of the inserts later. So, the main reason I use this template was just to line things up and also more importantly to cut out this base plastic. Um, I used the template to run the router up against it and cut out the plastic exactly flush with the template. So because I did it by hand I cut because I cut the MDF template out by hand there were some waves, so those translated onto the base shape, but it wasn't a huge deal. It doesn't really affect my writing, um, but it's somewhat annoying. I wish the 3D printed template worked better than it did. So after I cut the base out, I can go ahead and bend metal edges around to that shape. So these edges are bent around the, pl the bottom sheet of plastic and glued on um, just to hold it there until I press it into the uh, press all the layers together. And then the epoxy is the main bonding agent that holds it there. Um, these edges are very important to
to have because they are what help you dig into the snow and initiate and come out of your turns and hold your edges in the snow. So it's pretty important to take your time with these and get them as close as possible. Uh, these tight turns drove me nuts. Uh, they were even so tight that I broke a couple edges. I just snapped it because I was asking too much. Um, I found that heating it up with a blowtorch really helped bend it. Um, but I didn't actually record that part. Because so I was just too frustrated with doing this. Um, here you can see I'm bending the same side twice. I was very stupid. Uh, I had to go back and unbend and then rebend that edge. So I was kind of kicking myself there. So that tool I was using, actually both these tools I was using, um, I made a while ago. I just found them on the internet. I, all this that I'm doing, I just found on the internet. Um, there's a snowboarding forum, snowboard and ski building forum that has been a huge help. Uh, this is where I got most of these ideas. So. The one I was using, I'm using in the vise, is uh, modified tile nippers. I made them very poorly, so I have to use it with a vise to get the, enough clamping strength. And the other tool I'm using is um, pipe benders that I cut a little groove in so that the edge could fit in properly. So after they're bent, like I said, I just super glue them on. Um, I don't really need that much, just enough to hold them there. Because like I said earlier, the epoxy is what actually holds them. I just want them to sit there until I can press it later. So this was actually, I actually did this before I cut the base and bent the edges and even the template actually I'm just putting them later in the video because it makes more sense um, so I came up with this chevron pattern idea a long time ago because on the previous boards I was building I just had these leftover pieces of wood that were just kinda of going to waste and um, so I had this idea that just to use this wood but it's kind of funny because I think it's the coolest looking board I have now <laughs> so at first my glue up process was pretty slow I tried to clamp them all together it wasn't working too well I it, it was definitely a process to figure out how to do it right um, at the end of the day, I found that I really didn't need to clamp the wood together. Um, I know it's against woodworking rules, really, but my thought process was I just needed the wood to hold together until I could press the board. So that means it just had to be strong enough to bend into the profile and to withstand the beating of um, tapering it. So at the end of the day I just didn't clamp them. I, I held it with my hands for a little bit and then let the glue dry and it works. Nothing snapped so. Okay. 
can't complain. Um, so here I'm trying to line up those three black strips with the template holes. So like uh, with those really dark pieces, it's still pop poplar, it's just they're really dark for some reason. Um, and I was trying to use that to make a little cool pattern in the board. I lined those up with where the bindings would go. So those dark stripes line up well with the bindings and I don't know if someone who didn't hear me say that would think it was intentional, but I like how it looks, so. So after it was all glued, um, uh, I just had to sand it down. My my thought at the beginning was I was going to sand down one side, make it all flat so that it sits flat on the table, and then use a router sled to make the other side flat. Um, if you don't know what a router sled is, you'll see it soon. I'm actually making it right here. Um, it's pretty much just a CNC machine for a cheap person, <laughs> for someone that's broke like me. Uh, it's just, um, I used an MDF sheet with 2x4 rails. And then there's a sled that goes on top of those rails that the router sits in with a surfacing bit that goes back and forth to make the wood underneath it flat. If you didn't understand that, you'll see soon what I mean. So, like I said earlier, my original thought was to use this sled to make the other side flat and then it would be 100% certain that it's flat but I messed up the first time with building this sled. I accidentally made one of the rails taller than the other by like, I don't know, a millimeter or two. So I didn't get clean lines. So here I am trying to make it flat and I was very unsatisfied with it. So I ended up just scrapping it and then sanding it down by hand, which um, at the end turned out better in terms of just making it smooth. I finally realized what the issue was with the sled and that here I am fixing that. I just ripped off the uh, rails and then I'm going to resaw them on the table saw. And then I'm going to go thin it to the thickness I want and taper it. So now that I've reattached the rails, I'm ready to make it thin. And... I was, at this point in time, the wood was really warped, so that's why I just grabbed anything heavy I could find around the shop and just set it on there, just to make it as flat as possible. Because if the wood isn't sitting flat on the table, then my router isn't going to cut it flat. So... This and the next pass were just to make it flat and I actually ended up exactly at the thickness I wanted so it worked out perfectly 
Uh, I was shooting for seven millimeters thick in the center, so that's what I was going for first. So, just flip it over and do the same thing. Um, the reason I chose 7 millimeters for the middle was I really didn't have much faith in my core design. I think it looks really cool, but I don't really think it's practical. There's no single strand of wood that was going all the way down. So I wanted to beef it up, make it thicker, and whatnot. So here, I'm using those guide holes and the clear plastic to line my um, insert guide holes onto those three dark strips like I was talking about earlier. So once I line it up right, I clamp the template on and then use those small holes to drill into the core. So I just use the template as a guide. So I know I'm exactly where I want to go <clears throat> and at this point I knew I was at the right thickness so I went ahead and drilled my insert holes so this is why I kept those guide holes really small because on this bit and um, the through bit there's a little sticker in the middle that I could line up perfectly with that small hole. And that was important to go all the way through with a small hole because like I'm doing here, I'm only drilling halfway through on both sides in order to reduce tear out. So the tear out um, looks terrible and it's really hard to deal with. So that's just a good way to minimize it. And then so once I got those holes drilled, um, and I'm at the thickness I want for the inside it's time to taper the tail and the nose to a much thinner thickness and the reason this is done is to reduce weight while you're swinging around on the slopes and it's also very important so that the wood bends into the press properly if it was really thick it would be really hard to bend it up into the shape you want. It also makes um, the, board, the board much more flexible where you want it to be flexible up in the tips. Um, so it allows for butter tricks, um, presses. It's just I've never ridden a board that wasn't tapered in the tips. So on the tail, since they're really skinny and the grain isn't going parallel to the tails, um, I was really scared about that um, that strength. I thought it would, it would just snap, so I went really thick with three and a half millimeters, and the nose I went to two millimeters. So after I had the base and the core done I just bought the fiberglass and I just bought the top sheet I had everything all the components ready to sandwich together I just had to build the thing to sandwich it together so that's the press um, I usually 3d print a template to route out the press and make sure all of them are the same but like I said earlier my 3d printer is giving me issues so I got it printed, I did the same process for one, um, I don't know what to call it, let's say stringer um, slat, it's like a slat. So I'm going to cut the shape I want for my snowboard 
into all these boards and I'm going to glue them together so that it has the camber I want. If that doesn't make sense, just watch. It'll make sense later. So I cut it in and I was going to use a flush cut bit on the router to make sure all the others are the same, but that was giving me issues, so I just decided to do it by hand. Um, that was frustrating. A lot of this process was frustrating, actually. But I just cut it out with a jigsaw. I didn't like the jigsaw because um, it was very inconsistent. But the profile I decided to go with was a camber in between the feet and then once it outside the feet it went from camber to flat and then once it hit the widest point on the board it bent up into the shape so here I am uh, gluing all the slats together and it's kind of hard to see in the video, but it was pretty shabby. There was really hard ridges. Um, it was definitely less than ideal. But we went with it. Um, and I kind of, every press is kind of like that that I make. But it usually doesn't end up matter or being a significance because I use a foam to negate those ridges which it did a good job on this on this board it still worked so this is the foam I was talking about um, I also use the foam to make markers and line everything up so you saw I used those holes that I had marked on the base sheet and I lined them up with the holes I drilled into the core so that I knew everything was aligned perfectly because if they shift a little bit when I'm pressing the core won't be right the inserts won't be in the right spot they won't be exactly in the middle so that was a big deal and I also um, just epoxied the inserts into those holes after I lined it up so this is the layup process. Um, I found that mixing each layer's epoxy separately takes away a lot of stress. So I had my dad mixing the epoxy while, while I spread it. And then we just put it in the press and clamped it up. Um, and that's always stressful because you're in a time crunch while you're spreading it around the epoxy is curing so I was pretty relieved to take it out of the press and see that the snowboard looked pretty good um, so after it's out of the press I'm just cutting all the excess wood fiberglass plastic off and I'm getting this perfect shape because I bent the edges to this shape and I just follow with the jigsaw I just follow the edge so I butt up against it with the blade the blade doesn't cut through it and it's perfect so that's why I bothered um, bending all the way around into the swallowtail so that I could get a good cut in there um, another thing I didn't mention is I added in the layup, I printed a my favorite Bible verse on oriental rice paper, which absorbs liquid really well, and I put it on top of the core in between the fiberglass and the core, and the epoxy just wets out the paper, and the ink is left, so that's how I got this little Bible verse graphic um, right next to the swallowtail. Um, after I deflash it, I drilled out the inserts and I beveled the sidewalls with a sander. Uh, this is mostly just done by eye. I made sure everything looked smooth and clean. Um, it works. 
I mean, not ideal, but it works. That's pretty much the mantra of this whole build. Um, so after I had the sidewalls beveled, I covered up the top with tape, and I am spraying polyurethane on the sidewalls. I'm doing this because, like I said, on the top there's plastic that is a moisture barrier, but on the sides, uh, most companies put a plastic there too, but I don't like doing that, just because it's harder to make. Um, so there's raw wood on there, I just need a bo uh, moisture barrier. So that's what the polyurethane is for. Um, then after I did that, I sanded the base, which I'm going to go and get a professional base grind to get all, to make sure it's flat, get all the epoxy off, but I just got most of the epoxy off with uh, my own tools. It's not perfect, but it is what it is. I also went and put multiple coats of polyurethane on just because that's what the can says to do. It's the best finish, so following in instructions. And yeah, there it is. It, you can see that uh, camber to flat right there. Um, I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. There's the Proverbs graphic, Proverbs 1-7. Bible verse graphic. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.